How's it going folks? I'm Deswood Desfit and this is the brand new Wahoo Kicker Roller Indoor Bike Trainer. And this is Wahoo's take on combining the comfort, ride feel, and convenience of rollers with the interactivity of a smart bike trainer. So direct drive smart trainers like the Wahoo Kicker and Wahoo Kicker Core have really taken off in terms of popularity because they provide a nice solid platform with a direct connection from your drivetrain to the trainer, as well as being much quieter than a traditional wheel on trainer. And if you've ridden rollers before, you probably know that the ride feel and comfort is really nice where there's plenty of side to side movement which feels really organic and there's also a little bit of squish from your tires which certainly can help with ride comfort especially on longer rides but with rollers there's a little bit of a learning curve plus you have to pay attention when you're riding so you don't go careening off into your TV. So what Wahoo's done here with the rollers combined their long experience with smart bike trainers with the comfort of a roller system with an interactive experience which you can use on Zwift and other platforms. So in today's video, I'll be going over everything that you need to know about Wahoo's new roller indoor bike trainer, including the setup, the ride feel, how it works on different platforms, as well as a few things that you should consider if you're comparing something like this to a direct drive bike trainer. And if the information in this video does help you out at all, don't be shy about hitting that like button down below. It's a small little thing that you can do that'll help this video and the channel quite a bit, and I appreciate it. Oh, and then one last thing before we get into it is that the roller isn't the only new product that Wahoo's launching today. Wahoo's also launching their new PowerLink Zero Power Meter pedals that are based off of the Speedplay pedal system. And I've got another video with all the details on that that I'll have linked down in the description below. And it's actually no coincidence that they're launching these power meter pedals today alongside the roller because they actually complement one another. More details on that here in just a bit. So let's quickly go over the unboxing and setup process and then we can talk about how this thing actually rides. So the roller comes in a pretty substantial box and the roller itself weighs a little bit over 50 pounds. The box may look large and daunting, but honestly, this was an extremely simple process to get it together. They packaged everything really securely so there's not much risk of damage during shipping or anything like that. And here's everything inside the box. Seriously, that's it. So a lot of the assembly is already done for you. So after you remove all the protective bits, first off, just go ahead and unfold the arm that holds your front wheel in place on the frontmost portion of the roller. So from here, all we need to do is just attach the front portion to the back portion via this bar in the center, and this basically just slides into place. There's a little cap on the back portion, but don't remove that. You actually do need that because that's going to be used for stability and a tight fit when you insert it. So all you do is just slide the back piece into the front piece, align the clamp with the screws on the side, and then screw those screws into place using the included screwdriver. And that's basically it for the assembly other than plugging it in, of course. And then from here, you just grab your bike, plop it on the roller, and then adjust it for the length of your bike by loosening that front clamp and just moving the back portion of the roller forward or backward as needed, ensuring that your front wheel is nestled nicely into the front wheel block and that your rear tire sits evenly on the two roller system on the back. And then from here, you'll want to slide the front tire gripper over your front tire and then just rotate the little wheel that they have up top to secure your front wheel into place. And then you just plug it in and seriously, that's it for the assembly. And by the way, the adapter looks to be the exact same adapter that they use on the Kicker V5 direct drive trainer. And then for the types of bike that you can use with the roller, they say that it's optimized for road bikes with 700C wheels with tire widths up to 2.1 inches or 53 millimeters. So you can certainly use pretty much any road bike or even a gravel bike. And what's nice about this too versus a direct drive bike trainer is that it's just a little bit more convenient taking your bike on and off because you don't need to remove your rear wheel. However, if you prefer to use a trainer tire that's specifically meant for wheel-on indoor bike trainers like the one I have right here in red, you may be switching out either a wheel or a tire. So going back to the setup process, after you plug it in, you'll want to go ahead and pair it up with the Wahoo app. Not the Element app, but the Wahoo app. And here's where you can check that it's all working. You can assign a tire circumference as well as adjust some other settings. And I'm going to circle back to the Wahoo app here in just one second, but let's first talk about the ride feel. And seriously, folks, this thing rides great. So while riding it, your bike's gonna have a little bit of side-to-side -side motion since your bike can still pivot slightly from the head tube, and this certainly adds some movement that helps with comfort over longer rides. In addition, you'll also have a slight squish from your rear tire, which definitely makes it feel more organic as well. It's actually been quite a while since I've ridden rollers consistently, but I kind of forgot about why rollers are still around. They're just so darn comfortable to ride, and I could have ridden for hours and hours on my first ride. Plus, there's the fact that since my front wheel was locked in place, I didn't have to pay attention to staying on the rollers. I was just more concentrated on my ride. Okay, so that's the overall ride feel of the roller compared to something like a direct drive bike trainer, but a big feature of the roller is that it's also an interactive smart bike trainer where you can use it with training programs like Zwift and Wahoo's own system training platform where resistance can be automatically controlled via one of those apps. But there is a little bit of catch with this. You will need a power meter on your bike and that can be a pedal-based power meter, a crank-based power meter, or even a hub-based power meter. So how this all works is that the roller pairs up with the power meter on your bike via Ant Plus. And in this example, I'm using Wahoo's new PowerLink Zero Pedal 
pedals, but you can use pretty much any power meter that transmits power over amp plus, which is basically all of them. And if for some reason you have a bunch of different active power meters around, they even provide a setting in the app where you can lock the roller to a specific power meter. That's kind of neat. And then what happens from here is that the roller connects to your training software of choice by transmitting the power and cadence from your power meter as well as the speed and controllable trainer portion where the software controls the resistance on your trainer. And then on the back of the unit, there's gonna be indicator lights that show Bluetooth connectivity and whether or not it's linked up with a power meter. And then inside the housing here is where it controls the resistance. And it has a 10.5 pound flywheel and it can provide up to 1500 watts of resistance. The flywheel may not be as heavy as what you'll find on some direct drive bike trainers, but you also do have the additional inertia that happens from the rear wheel. So the dynamics are a little bit different, but the ride feel really is great. So in this example, I have it paired up with Zwift as the controllable trainer, and then the cadence and power that the roller is transmitting is actually the cadence and power that's coming from the pedals. And then at this point, it just works like just like any other interactive smart bike trainer. At this point, where you when you encounter a hill, it just adjusts your resistance accordingly. And the experience with Zwift is really, really good. I found the responsiveness to be very realistic and pretty much in real time with climbs and descents. And it was also quite responsive with quick undulating climbs like in Titans Grove or some of the New York City courses. So the ride experience with programs like Zwift, which are kind of like just riding simulation programs, the roller does an amazing job, seriously. But with erg mode, when in terms of riding at set wattages for specific durations, as well as kind of like sudden or bigger jumps in resistance, the roller doesn't shine as bright. So I tried this with both Trainer Road as well as Wahoo's own system training platform. And what I found is that for holding resistance at a certain wattage, it was kind of shaky and inconsistent where you could feel like it was in the ballpark, but it never felt really solid. And then with sudden changes in resistance, this was a little bit odd where on some intervals, I felt it immediately kick in within like a second or two, which was great. But then on a handful of intervals, it took about maybe like five to 10 seconds to respond. It was a little bit odd. And then when it comes to compensating, if either you go above or below your target power, this is where trainers need to kind of adjust resistance on the fly to ensure that you're staying close to your power target. And again, the responsiveness wasn't really quite there. So where I think the ride experience is amazing with something like Zwift, I think there's probably a little bit more work that needs to be done with erg mode. Thankfully, Wahoo is pretty well known at issuing plenty of firmware updates after a device is being launched. So I'll definitely have to circle back to erg mode a little bit later on down the road. And then another thing to consider too is that with hard sprints, those can be a little bit tougher with the roller where if you're really hammering down, there can be a chance that your rear tire may bounce around. Those are a bit farther and fewer between for my workouts, but it's just kind of something to note. And then while we're talking about sprints, I almost forgot to talk about the stability in regards to how the front wheel is held in place with the tire gripper. And I didn't have any issues with that at all. It didn't feel like there was a lot of torque or anything like that happening where I was worried about compromising the integrity of my wheel, fork, or my frame. And then another thing, and this is kind of related to sprints, is that I noticed that there's no rubber gripper pieces on the entire bottom of the roller. So this thing actually can slide around kind of easily. You probably should have this on a trainer mat, but if you happen to have this on a hardwood floor and if you're doing sprints, what'll happen is that when you go to shift your weight forward, it can kind of move a little bit. Is it as quiet as a direct drive bike trainer? Well, no, and that's the nature of having a wheel on trainer where there's simply more sound that's created from the contact of the tire to the trainer. But for not being a direct drive bike trainer, it's actually surprisingly quiet. I mean, I don't think you should have any issues with it in an apartment or anything like that. And then lastly, let's talk about just a couple random notes that I didn't know exactly where in the video to talk about them. So you'll notice these two notches down here on the frontmost portion of the roller. And this is kind of smart where they have these here so you can use a trainer desk like Wahoo's own desk or even this third party one that I have. And although this is compatible with Wahoo's own trainer desk, this is not gonna be compatible with Wahoo's climb accessory. And the other question that you may have is that, do I really need a power meter to make the roller work with Zwift? And that is an unfortunate yes. So what I did here in this example is I made sure that the roller was not paired to any power meter. And then I did pair the roller with Zwift to see if it would at least still transmit speed or attempt to control the resistance. And unfortunately, my avatar didn't move. And then I also tried to use a separate cadence sensor to see if that would have any effect and same deal there. So you really do need to have a power meter to use the interactive portions of the roller. But what is nice though, is that you can still just use this as a roller system. So it's actually unplugged right now and it just works just like any other roller. Overall though, the new Kicker roller provides an extremely nice, comfortable indoor riding experience. And if you spend a lot of time in the trainer, especially with programs like Zwift, I can highly recommend the roller. There's a couple of things to consider, of course, such as the fact that you do have to have a power meter to benefit from the 
interactive elements of the roller. So they're gonna be selling the roller by itself as well as a roller bundle that comes with the PowerLink Zero pedals if you don't happen to already have a power meter. But the other things to consider too is that if you do a lot of hard sprints or if you do a lot of erg mode workouts, that's where a direct drive bike trainer may fit the build a little bit better. But for the whole interactive experience of using it with something like Zwift where there's constantly varying resistance, the roller does amazing. So the roller costs $7.99, which I think is an okay price point if you already own a power meter. But if you don't own a power meter, you will have to add that into the total price to take full advantage of the interactive elements of the roller. Wahoo is offering a roller and PowerLink Zero pedal bundle where they're gonna be bundling the single-sided PowerLink Zero pedals with the roller for $13.99, which is effectively $50 off the total price if you were to buy both separately. But real talk, when I first heard about the roller, I was like, eh, neat. But after riding it, especially on Zwift, I was kind of just blown away at how comfortable and how good the experience was. Anyhow, if you found the information in this video useful, do me a favor and just hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more sports tech videos that are coming soon. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.